Bwana Yesu asifiwe tena. Amen. Yeah, good morning. It's a good morning. It's a new day to each and every one of you. And we thank God for this day. We thank God for the blessings of the rain and the weather. Praise the Lord. So it's a new day. It's a good morning to each and every one of us. And we thank God for his mercies. For his mercies endures forever. And they are new each and every day. So the Lord has been good to me and my family. And I thank him for his goodness. I thank him for his healing mercies. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And that is my testimony this morning. And I do believe I do believe Hallelujah. Mnanisikia. I do believe each one of you has a testimony too. I do believe each one of you has a testimony this morning. How many people have a testimony? How many people have a testimony by show of hands? I'm not going to call you here to talk. Yeah, you know when I stand here, I always ask questions. So you must cooperate. Hallelujah. You know, it is always good to say your story. Tell others your story. Give your testimony on what God has done for you. Praise the Lord. It is one way of giving thanks to God. It shows how you appreciate your God, how appreciative you are to your God. You never know. When you say your story or you give your testimony, it can motivate somebody who is listening to you, who is watching at you, to do what? To press forward. It can motivate somebody not to give up. It can make somebody, it can lift someone so that he can press, so that he can tap the same blessings that you have received. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, and now back to our today's reading and today's topic. About four months ago, yeah, roughly four months ago, we, we celebrated about the birth of Jesus, right? Four months ago, the birth of Jesus. I'm talking the birth of Jesus. And one week ago, we celebrated about what? The death and the resurrection of Jesus. And therefore, we are still in the mood of the resurrection of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Our reading today, Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Actually, I wanted to read the whole, of, the whole chapters, but it is too long. So I'll begin from 33 to number 53. So you can follow with me. Luke chapter 24. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the sons. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. 
he told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to whole nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are all witnesses of these things. Uh -huh. I am going to send you what, what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they started continually at the they stayed continually at the temple praising God. Amen. Can you say amen to the word of God? Amen. Yeah, this is the story about Jesus appearing to his disciples after his resurrection. So quickly, my topic today, the glory of the recent king, O oh Lord. Amen. The glory, my topic today, the glory of the risen king. The glory of the recent king, O oh Lord. Now, do you believe that Jesus Christ died and resurrected after three days? Do you believe that? Yes. And his resurrection has brought us joy. Do we believe that his resurrection has brought us joy in our hearts? Do we believe that his resurrection has given us a new life? Yes. Mm -hmm. Some people are not talking. Do we believe, do we believe that... His resurrection gives us a future hope. Amen. Hallelujah. So those are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves as we focus on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So number one, Jesus' resurrection, Jesus resurrection gives us joy. Jesus' resurrection gives us joy. It gives us joy knowing that the Christ is here with us today. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to read Matthew 28. Matthew 28 and verse 8. Matthew 28 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. And ran to tell his disciples. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a scripture that we read uh, one Sunday ago when Bishop was preaching. It's a story about when you begin from verse 1. It's a story about those who women who went to visit Jesus in the tomb. Praise the name of the Jesus. Where Jesus was buried. And when we look at this scripture, we find that these women, you know the women? You know the, their names? Yes. So we find that these women were very great followers of Jesus. Are you a follower of Jesus? Can you ask your neighbor whether he's a follower of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Hallelujah. And they were friends of Jesus. They were also friends of Jesus. Are you a friend of Jesus? Yes. Ask your neighbor whether he's a friend of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. This... Very good. So these women, again, they love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor whether he loves Jesus. He or she loves Jesus. Yes. yes. I, want, I want everyone to cooperate. I want everyone to be active. Okay? Yeah, you know, in this era of CBC, in this era of CBC, learners are allowed to make noise in class. And just necessary noise, not just unnecessary, necessary joy, noise. Praise the name of the Lord. And I also want to involve you. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, I don't want to keep quiet. I don't want to talk alone. And you are just listening. That is what used to happen in 844. A teacher could come in class and stand and talk throughout the lesson and no learner is talking. But in CBC, you just facilitate and the, the learners do themselves. They discover themselves. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And right, because it's a discovery service, I also want you to discover yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Every 
thing should not come from me. So I want your cooperation. So we all love Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And these women, they followed Jesus up to the last moment when Jesus died. Praise the name of the Lord. And the death of Jesus was not a easy thing to them. It was not a easy to them because they were, they were friends of Jesus. They loved Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And when Jesus died and he was buried in the tomb, they did not give up. They went to visit Jesus in the tomb. Praise the name of the Lord. So one thing I discovered that women are so caring. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Do we have ladies in the house? Yes. I'll come to men. Don't, don't worry about that. Women are so caring. They are so caring. These women proved to be more loyal to Jesus more than his 11 disciples, 12 disciples. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of their attitude towards Jesus. And one thing that I asked myself when I was reading this scripture, because of this, this loyalty of these women, I, I just asked myself, what was the contribution of men during, that, during those times? What was the contribution of men? How did men show concern towards Jesus suffering, his death, and resurrection? And because when I read the scripture, the only thing I found about men is they did what? They denied Jesus. Just imagine. Those are the things I could get. They denied Jesus. They are the ones who crucified Jesus, brought him to the cross. They betrayed. But no worries, because he forgave us all our sins. All our sins were forgiven. All our sins were forgiven. Remember on the cross, he cried and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So we don't need to worry because all our sins were forgiven. Even those denying, nailing Jesus on the cross, or betray, betraying, all those sins were forgiven. So we don't need to worry. All our sins were forgiven. What we need to focus is to, to love him without dragging back to the sinful nature because we were forgiven all our sins. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's go back to the scripture. So on that Sunday morning, when these ladies, women, went to visit Jesus, they got a surprise that Jesus had resurrected. And their joy filled their hearts. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, so resurrection of Jesus has brought joy into our Yes, praise the name of the Lord. When you read again Luke chapter 24, back to our scripture, Luke 24 and verse 41. Let's see again how joy brought, how resurrection of Jesus brought joy to people's lives. Luke 24, number 41. We'll also read again 51 to 53, the same chapter. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? Let me read 51 to 53. When he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Mm -hmm. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Mm -hmm. And they stayed continually at the temple praising God. When the risen Christ appeared to his disciples, the disciples were filled with great joy. Praise the name of the Lord. See, Jesus Christ alive again brought joy to them, and therefore they worshipped God and praised him because of the joy they had. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, as Christians today, the joy that we receive from the risen Christ calls us to, number one, the joy that we receive from risen Christ calls us to, number one, know him. 
The joy that we receive from the risen Christ causes us to number one, know him. Number two, be with him. And number three, love him without dragging back to our sinful nature. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The joy that we receive from the risen Christ calls us to number one, know him. Number two, be with him and love him without dragging back to our, sin, to our sinful nature. Remember, through his death, all our sins were forgiven. So we don't need, we are supposed to be very careful and avoid going back to our sinful nature. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. At the back, are we together? Hallelujah. Number two, we said number one, the resurrection of Jesus brings us joy. Now we go to number two. Yes, big two. So through Jesus' resurrection, we receive a new life in Christ Jesus. We receive new life in Christ Jesus. You know, the resurrection of Jesus is not, is not just a doctrine to believe, but a truth that should change our behavior. Praise the name of the Lord. A truth that should impact our lives. I remember this week we were asked about whether the Passover has impacted our lives. Did you see that question? And all of us, we say that, yes, it changed your life. So the resurrection of Jesus should give us a new life. Through resurrection of Jesus, we should be able to receive a new life. It is a truth that should change our behavior as Christians. Ephesians chapter 4. We can read that one from Ephesians chapter 4 and find out how Paul writes to the Christians. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter, chapter 4 and num verse 1, number 1. <coughs> As a prisoner for the Lord, uh -huh. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You live what? A life worthy of the calling you have received. In other versions, they, they say, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. To walk in a manner. So we see Paul here writes to remind us as Christians. He reminds us as Christians the positions, the, our position in the risen Lord, in the, in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. He reminds us on, the, on our position in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And you can see again in Romans number 12, we can read that one. Romans 12 and verse 1 to 2. Uh -huh. Therefore, I had you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and prove that God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Here we see Paul writes again, and he, gives, he lays a foundation of the life Christians are supposed to live, life that is pleasing to God, and which should be a spiritual act of worship. In another in another version, I read, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is a spiritual act of worship. Praise the name of the Lord. So it lays a foundation of the life the Christians are supposed to live in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. So let us, let us, as Christians, let us be transformed by the resurrection of Jesus. Let us be transformed. Let our lives be renewed by the resurrection of Jesus 
Christ. Let us receive a new life, a new life in the risen Christ Jesus, a life that is pleasing to our God. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, our num big number three. The resurrection of Jesus gives us hope. It gives us a future hope. The risen Christ is our hope. Do we believe that the risen Christ is our hope? A few weeks ago, I was talking to young people and I was telling them that God has good plans for them. God has good plans for us, for each and every one of us. He has promised us good plans in Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh -huh. For I know the plans that I have for you. We know that verse. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, says the Lord. Plans to, pros to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you what? Yes, to give you a hope and a future. Praise the name of the Lord. And I was telling that, them that sometimes it is good to be patient with God. Praise the name of the Lord. Because God himself is patient. And this is not just for the young people, but for everyone. God is patient. And he acts at his own appointed time. And you, as you wait patiently on the Lord to act, have that hope and trust the Lord that is going to act on your favor. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know part of our lives are full of challenges. True? Part of our lives is full of cha challenges, but those challenges are there to strengthen us. They are not there to do what? To fail us. Challenges are there in life to strengthen us, but not to fail us. Even Jesus himself faced those challenges. Do we believe that Jesus faced challenges in his life? He was tempted by the devil. That was a challenge to him. He was rejected in his hometown. That was a challenge. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. So, and remember through those challenges that Jesus faced, he had a mission that he was supposed to accomplish. Praise the, praise the name of the Lord. Jesus had a mission that he was to complete here on earth, despite those challenges. And it was until while he was on the cross, said it is finished, that he accomplished the mission that he had. Jesus did not say it is finished because he was about to die. But he said it is finished because he had accomplished the mission that he had. So, and after his death, and his, after his death and his resurrected after three days, that resurrection of Jesus gives us hope that we too, we will live. Praise the name of the Lord. The resurrection of Jesus has given us hope that we too, we will live. Praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you will also live. We can read together. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you will. Yes, because I live, you will also Live. So no matter what trials that we go, no matter how tribula tribulations that we go through, trials of sorrow, trials of sickness, and any other challenges, Jesus himself went all through that, and that was not final for him. And it is not also final for us, because he said that because I live, we will also live. So Rather, because he lives, we will also live. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the risen king. Glory to the risen king. The resurrection of Jesus has brought joy in our lives. 
it has brought us a new life. It brings us a future hope. And therefore, as Christians, we should take the resurrection of Jesus as something that is important in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Yes. Are you blessed? How many people are blessed? How many people are blessed? Good. So let me welcome mom to come and conclude for me. May God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah.